Good afternoon, ONS. I am so glad to see you all here. It was really great to sort of see where we've come. I was very lucky to be a part of some of those events in the past, and I'm happy to be here today uh, in our evolution. So, um, as Arpit mentioned, um, I'm Heather Kirksey. I am the VP of Ecosystem and Community for the LF Networking Portfolio of Projects. Uh, previous to this, I was the Executive Director of OPNFV, so I remember some of those scenes that we just saw. Um, and today, uh, we are going to go through a virtual central office uh, demo. So, just a little bit about VCO. It's a topic that people have been talking about uh, for a while. And in fact, VCO and Edge are going to be the topics of a few more presentations uh, later today. But you know, one of the important things as we've you know, continued our NFV journey is the importance of sort of getting uh, all these services out closer and closer to our consumers. So, you know, the service providers are looking at using the existing real estate that they have in their central offices and modernizing those and deploying uh, residential enterprise and mobile services to improve efficiency, customer experience, improve cost. Uh, you know, when this journey started, um, you know, when we were, we started looking at the data center and then the central office uh, came to be a place that was very important. And when we started this activity, you know, the central office um, was in need of a lot of modernization. You know, the hardware was very bespoke. It was very monolithically integrated. There weren't a lot of standard interfaces. And over the past several years, I think we've made a lot of progress around virtualizing that looking at what happens if you have um, you know, commodity hardware, regular white box hardware, both in switching and in the servers. Uh, and we started de software defining a lot of aspects of that. And looking ahead, obviously, cloud native uh, becomes important, uh, orchestrating things in a more efficient fashion. So we're moving from sort of you know, a smaller number of data centers to huge numbers of central offices and even more edge uh, locations. And so um, you know, within OPNFV um, and many of our upstream partners, you know, we've been looking to look at how we can solve those problems for our end users. So when we started this journey, we had a lot of our operators you know, asking us within OPNFV to start looking at this. So last year, just a little over a year ago, we showed our first version um, of this journey in virtualizing the central office uh, from an OPNFV perspective at our summit in Beijing. Uh, it was focused on residential and enterprise use cases, and we really focused on sort of that first aspect, which was the onboarding of a lot of traditional residential and uh, enterprise use cases onto the open source platform. So on the residential side, uh, we looked at bringing a virtual BNG um, online on top of an open source platform built out of OpenStack and Open Daylight um, and other open source pieces. And then we also showed something similar with the uh, enterprise use cases. We showed a virtual CPE and some firewalling and, and other use cases of that sort. So looking ahead this year, we uh, wanted to look at mobile use cases. Um, you know, mobile, you know, sort of to round out the trio, but also as we look ahead at 5G, um, the residential enterprise use cases, they've got really good uh, business models behind them, but for 5G, it really becomes a necessity to move things further out, to get closer to our consumers so we can meet the latency um, uh, requirements of the of the use cases that we're looking to do there. So things like autonomous vehicles, drones, uh, AR, VR. So the demo that you are going to see today focuses on that sort of telecom network edge area and uh, the sort of the access evolution from uh, LTE to 5G. So we're going to be setting up uh, an end-to-end -end network with a next generation core. Um, you're going to see some disaggregated access um, and a full VRAN uh, implementation. And you're going to see some uh, live connectivity happen here on stage. Um, I wish I could say that all of you should look under your seats and you're going to find some AR VR goggles for that kind of use case. I, however, do not have Oprah Winfrey's money, so we will be doing a, a mobile use case. Um, and then before I go any further, just 
We are doing a live code with a live connection between here and California. So send us good energy and please be kind. <laughs> so um, with that, I would like to bring out uh, Fu Chao from China Mobile, who's very active in the OPNFE community. She is on the OPNFE TSC, and she is going to talk to us a little bit about China Mobile's vision of the uh, next generation mobile network and how some of this work from OPNFE and the demo fit into that. So it will be great to hear the perspective from the world's largest mobile operator. Thank you, okay. Fu Chao. Thank you, Heather. So, uh, good afternoon. I'm Fu Chao from China Mobile. Uh, China Mobile, we try to structure our future network into what we call TICS, Telecom Integrated Cloud. TICS, uh, basically, they are uh, provide, uh, using the cl cloud uh, technologies, including NFE and SDN, to provide this uh, virtualized environment for future virtualized network functions. Uh, we categorize ticks into core ticks and edge tick, in which core ticks, so they are located in some of some centralized locations uh, and basically support control plane surfaces. And edge ticks are deployed, distributed in large uh, numbers of uh, country, uh, cities and counties and support user plane surfaces and edge services. Uh, so this kind of architecture actually brings our network like in two ends. At the core end, the core ticks end, it seems like that the, the, the number of the ticks will be very small, but in each tick there will be a huge uh, scale. And in the edge ticks, there will be uh, comparably small scale clouds, but the, the, the number will be huge. With uh, this uh, architecture, actually brings us with uh, new requirements and expectations for the future network. For example, we would like to, to have the OpenStack uh, to have uh, management of a massive uh, distributed edge cloud. And also, we expect a common uh, deployment models from the core to the edge. And also, uh, we would uh, like to have not only OpenStack, but also Kubernetes into our cloud so that we could have uh, uh, stacks to support containerized VNF services. And uh, we also expect the, the stack to be agile and flexible. And also, they should have telco levels of uh, service assurance so that we could support all the different kinds of uh, uh, telco services. And end-to-end -end orchestration is something very important to us so that we could use one orchestrator from the core to the edge. So we are expecting that OPNFE could provide us with a list reference platform, which have all these uh, fancy capabilities to support our future network. Uh, we expect a lot for the VCO demo, if, especially this time for VCO 2.0, uh, beyond just the, the uh, residence and enterprise uh, use cases. This time we have the mobile use cases, which are mobile core and mobile edge. And we hope that this kind of demo can drive some of the work in the community and also provides us more experience and test tools for, for, for the uh, integration and testing of the future networks. So with that, let me uh, bring Azor onto the stage with more details for the architecture and the demo work. Please, Azor. Thank you, Thank you so much. Um, so the requirements that Fu Chao just laid out for you translated into a long list of you know, things that we needed to do for, for a demo. And uh, from the different service providers, we got interest in showing VRAN, showing Packet Core, showing IMS. Uh, particularly, uh, some of the things that were interest was to show the splits-based architecture that's actually defined in 5G, but with the 4G radio, and things like network slicing and edge compute. So the laundry list ran very long, and we started to actually now assemble together a team and different vendors to come together and actually build this particular demo. Um, obviously, our goal was to try to show as much as we can, but this time around, we were just focusing a lot more on the VRAN demo. Um, this, we used the exact same architecture that was defined as part of VCO 1.0, so it's the exact same stack. Now, with that stack, of course, with, because this is a new different use case, and you have new set of partners that are part of this particular stack, people like Expo, people like you know, um, Quartus, and Open Air Interface, which is actually an open source implementation of the radio, uh, is, is also part of this particular exercise. 
Um, again, we use it as part of the OpenStack platform with an SDN control using Open Daylight. And we built a complete architecture that actually shows both the, the RAN elements, the packet core, and the edge compute elements as part of the overall architecture. With that architecture as our blueprint that's to be deployed in a virtual central office, we now started to look at how do we go about actually building the overall demo. Um, so that brings me to the lab topology in terms of how we did it. Um, this time around, Cumulus was incredible in terms of uh, helping us host the entire environment in the California lab. So this is a full data center built with a leaf spine fabric uh, with six leaf switches, two spine switches, running Cumulus software on white box switches. And they also provided us complete hardware for this particular setup. What's new and interesting here, in addition to that particular data center fabric and the entire setup, is a software-defined radio. And yes, nothing would be fun without it being live, so we actually bought a Faraday cage, and we put some phones inside a Faraday cage. So now, looking at the overall topology in terms of how this looks like, let me just walk you through very briefly. What you see on the top left corner of the screen is the Faraday cage with the two phones in there. And you see that picture right underneath that with two phones, this actual antenna. And then there's a software-defined radio that's provided by Etis. And then you have the two bare metal nodes, the radio unit and the distributor unit. Those two bare metal nodes were provisioned by OpenStack. So OpenStack as a controller to actually build and manage those bare metal nodes. And then you have the rest of the OpenStack infrastructure hosting a whole host of virtual machines. Those virtual machines, uh, again, not all of the virtual machines are depicted here in this picture, but the centralized unit was actually running as a virtual machine on our setup. And then you have, the, of course, the Evolve Packet Core, but there's something very interesting in the middle there called the Session Director. The Session Director is actually redirecting traffic based on different phones to different sides of the infrastructure, one to the corporate VPN and another one to the internet. And what we have for you as part of this connectivity is actually a branch office that Heather's showing you right here on stage. And that's a live setup. And it's part of the live demo that's connecting back to our central office that's in California. And you have now some phone clients that are registering everywhere from, from California back to here. Now, you will get that information a little bit clearer in a moment as you see this particular data flow. So the data, what we'll be showing you live, is coming from the internet over through the packet core into one of the phones, and then out through the other phone back here all the way down to the branch office, and we will actually be able to show you something here. But before we actually show you anything, I would request you one thing. If you can all take out your phones, this is the first time in a, sp in a sp you know, session that somebody's asking you to take out your mobile phone, tweet with the hashtag ONS2018. If you can do that now, that would be great. In the meantime, I'm going to call Hanan to actually walk us through the demo. Hanan? I have. So I hope you're tweeting. All right. So yeah. I think it's time to switch over to our, our demo. So um, what, what are we seeing here is that I am having a remote desktop connected to the uh, lab back in California. And what you are seeing here as well is the representation of the two phones. We are actually controlling the phones on the cage through the app. Okay? And uh, to show you that this is uh, working uh, live, so I'm going to switch off one of the phones. Well, I, I, I did mention that it's back in California, <laughs> right? So there is some lag in here. So I'm maybe I, I'm going to ask my guys, uh, Dave, can you switch off the phone, please? <laughs> there we are. <laughs> so uh, we should be seeing the phone connecting. Yeah, there it is. It's attached to the network that we have live in the lab. And uh, the next thing I'm going to ask is, uh, let me see if I can get hold to the, oh, it's working now. So. Did you guys finish tweeting? Because I would like to see real time tweet here. Uh, and actually, I'm going to not do it here. And I'm going to do it here. <laughs> oh, no, not here we go. All right. <laughs> I say the Come other on, one, guys. There are no blue whales <laughs> on our stage today, please. Uh, 
There we go. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's refresh that. And I hope we are getting much better result now. All right. So we're seeing the tweets update that y'all are that y'all are sending in. So you are seeing. Yeah. This is good. So we you have that phone on stage. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> we have that phone connected to the internet. And actually, what I, what I didn't say is that there is two phones on on the cage connected to the same network. One of them is attached to the uh, is attached to the same network. Sorry, connected to the internet. The second phone is as well on the same cage. But even true is we are using the same radio and we are using the same EPC. Is attached to a corporate network. And that corporate network is where that PBX and that uh, central office is attached to. So just to show you guys that uh, we are live here. So I want to play some music. Of course, this music is playing loud in the cage. We are not hearing anything. It's back in California. But as we are doing a mobile demo, let's try to make a call. And I call back the stage here. Looks like I got a call. So. You're hearing something? Oh, I'm hearing something. Let's plug it into the stage okay. so we can let's hear what's coming over the phone. Let's share with everybody that that music. I love it when my friends call me with Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton. <laughs> All right, so woohoo! Well done. I am now forever going to refer to that song as Islands of Packets in the Mobile Data Stream. All right, so um, I just want to make sure that I sort of understood. So this phone, uh, I basically just got a phone call from your phone back in the cage in California. Absolutely, yeah. So what we were hearing is the music. That is, uh, th this phone is streaming music uh, and playing loudly on the, on the cage. And the second phone is picking up on, on the mic. What is what the first phone is is uh, playing and back through the voice channel to the call here in right, the stage. Cool. Yeah. All right. Cool. So as I said, I would love for this to have been something more like a augmented reality, virtual reality, but it's hard to do that in a cage on another continent. But um, so Azar, uh, we've had some. Uh, pretty graphs going back here in the background while those calls are happening. Do you just want to point out what was going on there? Sure, Heather. So while you were actually busy taking that call, I noticed that, that, that you see that SIP call went through and on this particular graph, and you see that it was active for a few seconds because that's when you were listening to the music. And then when you shut it off, it went back down again. And you can actually see that there was some data that went through that particular SIP session. So you actually see that live here. As, as soon as the call went up, you see the spike. And then when the, when the call goes down, you see you, the spike goes down. The other um, activity that you're, you're also seeing here, for example, on this particular screen is the assurance capability. Now, the first one was through the session director, where you're actually looking at what's happening on the SIP sessions. Now, this one, you're actually monitoring the voice traffic. And here, you can see the KPIs, latency variation over time. And here, you can see the success or failure rates. And you can actually see how many unique call attempts were there, why did they fail, they, were they successful? What was the delay, average delay? And of course, the cause, what is the error code for that particular failure? So really, what we're trying to do is show not only just a call that's going, but remember, one of the requirements that Fuchao laid out was to actually talk about full assurance capability end-to-end -end with all of the delay and all of the metrics that are assigned to this. So we were actually able to put that in, live monitor the call, show you all the metrics associated with that. Great. Thanks, Hanan and Azar. And if we can get back to the slides. All right. So just really quickly, um, you know, sort of pulling this together, unsurprisingly, the first lesson is you know, open source collaboration works. Um, we had 15 organizations and 30 volunteers uh, pulling this together. Um, and another point is the increasing maturity. So you know, point being, you know, we were actually showing you know, an actual virtual RAN. Um, and software radio uh, with open source software. We were showing this on commodity hardware built on open source uh, platforms. And there's interoperability between uh, the hardware and the virtual EPC. 
Um, you know, certainly that still there, you know, this did take work and a lot of planning around sort of hardware and specification. You know, one of the things that we will be looking to do across a number of projects like Acrino, OPNFV, LF networking, is to help sort of make that process a lot easier to go from, you know, sort of putting together a proof of concept to something that is really deployable and repeatable. And then certainly from a hardware optimization point of view, um, a fair, you know, fairly beefy hardware um, was necessary, and we did learn a fair amount about you know, uh, what things needed to go on bare metal, what things um, didn't really need to. A lot of detail around that's going to be uh, sort of in the white paper. And then in terms of what we're looking for as next steps, so first of all, if you would like a deeper dive into what we did here, um, we do have this demo running in the LF networking booth, along with a number of other great community demos showcasing the work that a lot of our projects have been doing. Um, Hanan and Azar are doing a zero-touch provisioning uh, for Edge, a breakout session during the conference. We also, uh, one of Fu Chao's colleagues uh, from China Mobile is, ho is hosting um, an unconference on CRAN. There are also a number of different uh, Edge and mobile boffs and unconferences and sessions happening this week. Check your schedule. Uh, you can join the v VCO demo mailing list if you're interested in continuing to evolve this. Um, we've got a number of working groups going on in OPNFV, a CRAN group, an edge group. Uh, the Rocket Project specifically is looking at some of that beefier hardware that a lot of folks are looking at the edge so we can make sure we've got interoperability with the open source applications and that. Um, we're also, as I said, really looking to operationalize what we've learned here. So start incorporating these capabilities into our CICD, our automated testing. One thing that we've done in the course of this project is we now actually have a virtual EPC um, as one of the VNFs that we deploy on various OPNFV um, scenarios as part of our regular testing so that we're able to make sure as we keep um, evolving the software stacks, that these types of applications work. And then, you know, as we mentioned, obviously there is a cloud native, you know, as Arpit and Dan were talking about, a cloud native vision that we have uh, for all of this. And there's work going on around um, cloud native activities across multiple projects in CNCF and LF networking. And I encourage folks who are interested to get involved in those. And then finally, I uh, thank the community volunteers who did this, whether it was providing software, defined radio, antennas, servers, racks, switches, getting this stuff shipped here, doing the software, doing the integration, a lot of people um, playing a part. Um, here were the ecosystem uh, partners uh, involved uh, in helping us spec this out, uh, helping to find requirements and providing those various things. And then finally, um, this was a collaboration across multiple um, open source communities and software from many of them. I'd just like to highlight Open Air Interface is actually one of the newest um, associate members of LF Networking, and they uh, are doing a lot of really interesting work. They provided um, a lot of great of the sort of next generation mobile pieces for this, and we look forward to future collaboration with them. And obviously, uh, the hardware that's in this rack is actually uh, open compute project based, so it's open source hardware with open source software running on top of it. Uh, some of it very generic, some of it very telecom, 5G specific, and um, you know this is what this is what I get up in the morning for. This is what I get very excited about is seeing folks from different projects come together to make our ecosystem better to make these use cases work and to continue to march technology forward. So I would like to ask my uh, wonderful co-conspirators and partners in crime to come out. As I said, it takes a lot of guts to do a live demo, especially one that crosses the ocean. So thank you all for your work and your guts and uh, take a bow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And so, <laughs> and so thank all of you very much for your time and attention today, and looking forward to a wonderful week with all of you. All right. Thank you, Heather and team.